Hi, my name is Larry Weber. I'm a professor of civil and environmental engineering and also co-founder of the Iowa Flood Center and co-founder of the Iowa Nutrient Research Center. And I'd like to talk to you tonight about flooding. Uh, some of you might be old enough to remember the 1993 floods that impacted so much of Iowa and the Mississippi River Basin in, in its entirety. Um, as Iowans, uh, following the 93 flood, we rolled up our sleeves and we recovered and recognized that we would never experience anything like it again in our lifetimes because we'd experienced the flood of a lifetime. And then we were aghast in 2008 when we saw a flood of even greater magnitude. Flood crest in Iowa City was about four feet higher in 2008 than 1993, about 10 and a half to 11 feet higher in Cedar Rapids with 30,000 people evacuated overnight and 1,300 city blocks impacted. Those two floods, um, 93 to 2008, led to the formation of the Iowa Flood Center and the start of a longer term process towards flood recovery in the state of Iowa. Now this spring, you know, we see the same thing out in, in western Iowa. 2011, the Missouri River was under flood stage for 100 days. That was a long wave flood that was born out of Montana and the Rocky Mountains, flowed down the Missouri River through a federal flood mitigation system and impacted many people along the Missouri River like we did in eastern Iowa before. Uh, those folks recovered from that flood by rolling up their sleeves and recovering their homes and their farms and their families and got back to work. This year, uh, they've experienced a flood of even greater magnitude. Our difference here was 15 years, uh, theirs is eight. So in just eight years, they've seen a flood of greater magnitude. Uh, presently, we're looking at about a $2 billion cost of recovery for western Iowa. And what's interesting about this flood is that it's impacted hundreds of people not thousands and tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, but really hundreds of people. It's a very lightly populated rural economy out there. Uh, there are flood uh, levees that have protected farms along the Missouri River for you know, many years. We have 53 breaches in those levees. Uh, so this is gonna take a lot of leadership multi-state uh, leadership. We've got the governors of the states coming together to try to think about a plan for recovery there. This is a major challenge. Do we have that kind of leadership? Do we have the kind of leadership that will be necessary to make the right decisions? Uh, I've been interviewed by a number of national media talking about what needs to be done, allowing that river room, that river some room to flood again. You know, that's a major, major challenge because it's going to upset some people. Um, you know, and so I'm not sure if we can do it. Do we have the leadership to improve water quality? And Chris Jones presented tonight about our fecal population equivalent in Iowa, 134 million equivalent people in this state. That's incredible. When we look at the long-term nitrate load leading the state of Iowa, this is some of Chris's data here. While we're supposed to be trying to go down 45% to meet the Gulf hypoxia uh, goals, we're up 77%. You know, so we're going in the wrong direction, folks. Uh, my question is, can, I, can the Iowa watershed approach uh, lead to a more resilient water future? We're working with eight uh, watershed management authorities in the Iowa watershed approach. Those are shown in the blue shaded areas across the state of Iowa. We have 15 water, or excuse me, 25 watershed management authorities that have been established in the state trying to take on a local approach. Uh, we can't rely on our state, and it doesn't seem that our federal government has the leadership today to take on these uh, major challenges. So can we do it at a local level? Uh, fortunately, we're seeing a lot of projects. We're spending about $30 million uh, on rural conservation projects to hold water back in wetlands and reconnected floodplains and small structures to try to reduce the magnitude of flooding and improve uh, water quality year-round. So with that, my time is up, and I'd be happy to take any questions at my poster. Thank you.